The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this Friday, April 9th, 2001. In today's episode, we're going to hear the latest in healthcare news. We're going to see what the doctors and nurses and everybody's been up to. Also, you know, I was thinking the other day about how um, at one point in time with my lupus, I used to excessively sweat. It's called hyperhidrosis. That's hyperhidrosis. And we're going to see what the connection is with hyper hydrosis and lupus really is to make our bodies go through that at one point in time I thought it was the lupus meds that they had me on that was causing all of this commotion in my body where if I were to go into a grocery store I would have to run into the freezer section and place my, well, half of my body into the compartment just to cool off. And no, it was not a hot flash. No, I was not having a hot flash. But we know that lupus can bring on early menopause. But this was something totally different. So, stay tuned for that conversation about excessive hyperhidrosis. So you know what I want you to do from the United States all the way to Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's right. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and to my listeners late at night. You know I appreciate you. So Grab your favorite glass of wine and come on and join the conversation right here on my story, Living with Lupus, and hear about my experience with hyperhidrosis. Ophthalmology Associates, PC, Doctors Berman and Dr. Zuckerbrod, treating diseases of the eye and eye surgery. You can reach them at 313 341 3450. Thank you for joining me. You know, when I thought about it, as I said earlier, um, about the hyperhidrosis, which basically means excessive sweating. And, you know, everybody experiences different side effects with lupus. No one person is the same as the other. And 
as I was stating earlier, I thought about um, when, you know, I would go grocery shopping and had to run, not walk, I mean literally run to the freezer section. And um, because I was dripping in sweat from head to toe it looked like a water faucet had turned on and I was standing under it and my sisters would always ask me what is wrong with you one sister would say oh it's a hot flash and no it was not a hot flash um and they would just laugh. And so I would, had to go to the doctor. And all of a sudden, it started at the doctor's office. And he, the doctor turned around and looked at me and said, hyperhidrosis, Susan. That's all it is. It could be the cause of the medication that you're on. It could be that the lupus um, is attacking the nervous system, your thyroid. It could be a lot of things. Let's see what's going on. And um, we went back and forth and back and forth. It was not the medication. It was just that the lupus was running rampant and attacking my um, system, internal system. And he asked me, do I go from cold to hot? I said, I sure do. Now, this was in the summertime. I would have to wear a hoodie, a hat, and some sweatpants because I would be cold. I never knew when it was going to hit me, but I could wake up. And I would be cold as ice. And then, all of a sudden, bam, I'm sweating profusely like a water fountain. Let's learn about hyper. Hydrosis. We know everyone's normal, has a normal body temperature. But I'm speaking for myself. As for me, um, it's like I'm always running a low grade fever. And the doctor said, well, that's normal for you because of your lupus. That's right. Um, but for most people, sweating it's normal and natural way for the body to help regulate its temperature. Now, for me, my temperature was all off kilter. Um, but for some people, sweating is an abnormally constant part of life. Soaking through their shirts, dampening hands, no matter the weather or level of activity. Activity. In these cases, excessive sweating is known as hyperhidrosis, which affects 2 to 3% of Americans. For the most part, hyperhidrosis isn't something to be too concerned about. If you're not experiencing any secondary side effects like heart, I'm sorry, not heart, but heat rash or skin infections and are able to go about your normal activities. It can be a little more than a nuisance that requires extra breathable clothing and strong antiperspirants. Now, let me tell you this. I have to use a anti 
perspirants that a man uses. I cannot use deodorants um, for women. I have to use a man's deodorant. Now, excessive sweating can also indicate an underlying health concern. And sometimes it can be tricky to know the difference. Now, excessive sweating comes on suddenly and unexpectedly. For me, it would be like somebody was sticking pins all through my body and on my face. And then the heat will come. And all I could do was just be still still, and sweat. Now, sudden unexpected sweating could be a sign for some that you're stressed or anxious. This type of sweat is different from the perspiration that results from your body's attempt to cool you down because it's caused by a surge in adrenaline or your body's fight or flight response. Now, with that being said, a sudden onset of sweating isn't always a reason to panic. It can come with certain situations, such as with warmer temperatures, spicy food, exercises, or stress. And doesn't always mean there's a more significant underlying condition. Now, when sweating is accompanied by a feeling of dizziness or lightheadedness, it may be a signal and underlying health issue like low blood sugar levels or hypoglycemia, which may be caused by a drop in blood pressure. While these symptoms on their own might not seem troubling, Check in with your doctor to ensure there's no underlying cause for concern. Now, you ever have that sweating at night where you can't sleep? A flushing feeling, chest pains, seizures, fatigue, or increased thirst and urination? Taking stock of your overall health can help determine if excessive sweating is part of a larger issue. Insomnia, insomnia, excuse me, plus sweating, for example, can be a sign of hyperthyroidism. Sweating along with flushing when your face and chest feel hot and change color, may signal carcinoid syndrome, or when a rare cancerous tumor secretes certain chemicals into your bloodstream. Now that's according to Mayo Clinic. Excessive sweating paired with chest pain sometimes indicate a serious heart condition. Seizures accompanied by sweating, meanwhile, usually means people are experiencing a medication overdose. Sweating with fatigue could mean an infection or low blood pressure. Now, do you ever experience flu-like symptoms, including a fever and cough when you're sweating? Well, sweating accompanied by a fever may reflect a bacterial 
or viral infection like malaria or tuberculosis. A fever is the result of a change in the body's temperature. Your brain automatically sets your body's temperature a little higher. A fight to fight the infection present in your body, which leads to feeling cold and generating heat. This is why it is necessary to break the fever by regulating the body's temperature and sweating it out. When we can return, I just can't talk today, you guys. When we return, we'll finish up and I'll tell you another story about how I experience hyper hydrosis with my lupus. Let me ask you guys something. How many of you know if your doctor ever tests your thyroid function? And there's a reason why I'm asking. Because we know that basically lupus attacks all the major internal organs in the body, systemic lupus. We know that discoid lupus attacks attacks the skin but if you're saying yeah they test my thyroid they test the TSH level the T3 and T4 but let me ask you this a thyroid panel should include an RT3 RT4, TSH, TPO, TGA, free T3, and free T4 panels also. So if you're just getting the, the, um, the conventional TSH, T3, and T4, you need to say, what about the RT3, RT4, TSH, TPO, TGA, and free T3, T4? Just like um, I had to tell one doctor um, when they tested my thyroid, I said, you need to check the parathyroid also. And they looked at me and I said, oh, you're wondering how I knew I had a parathyroid. And they started laughing. So check your lab work. You should all always keep a copy of your lab work so that you can compare your lab results to see where you stand. Um, and if they just are testing the conventional, like I said, TSH, T3, T4, you, there's also another panel that they should be testing also, which is which includes the TSH, T3, and T4. So you need to check um, to see exactly what panel they are running on you because... Up to 60% of people with thyroid dysfunctions don't even realize they have a problem. You may not realize that lupus has attacked your thyroid. And you know, I've talked about this previously in a previous episode. You... Well, how can I put this? You know, you may think with the number of doctors that we go through to, I shouldn't say go through, well, yeah, go through and go to, that they would do more preventative testing on us that would cover everything except the basic TSH, T3, and T4. 
But if you don't say nothing, and if you don't let them know, you know what's going on, they never, never would um, even consider it. Because, look, if you do have a problem where lupus has attacked your thyroid, thyroid dysfunction is one of the most underdiagnosed and improperly treated health conditions. That's why many of those who are on current meds don't feel any better because they're not getting better. Their treatment plan may be too standardized and doesn't fit their personal needs. So you really need to um, talk to your to your doctor. You really do, um, because it it is an underlying condition, especially if you're experiencing excessive hyperhidrosis. And um, and you don't understand why, or you're not um, old enough to be going through menopause, and lupus plays a real havoc on our internal system. It makes it go haywire. Truly makes it go haywire, where we could be at a point where we're saying, what is going on? And the first thing that I have heard doctors say, oh, we're going to blame it on lupus. And I would say, oh, I don't think so. I think you need to run some tests. Now, with hyperhidrosis, You can go from freezing to burning and then dripping sweat. Excessive sweating, hot flashes, or extreme body temperature fluctuations are frequently a challenge for those of us with lupus. And they can also be side effects from medication. And it can be a symptom of menopause, a consequence of lupus, impact on the nervous system and hormones, or another condition. I've asked people not to call me. Um... So you really, really need to be truthful and honest with your doctors. Don't be ashamed to say, you know, something's going on. You know, some people um, have general discomfort and can be occasionally embarrassed by the sweating and the hot flashes. And it can add to sleep problems. Now, for number one, I wasn't embarrassed at all because um, as the the sweat was pouring off of me, I would be drinking Gatorade trying to replenish what was being taken out of me, you know, one good thing about it, I lost weight, that fluid, water weight, I lost that weight. But if you are experiencing excessive hyperhidrosis, think about getting a cooling mattress or mattress cover, drinking cold water, cold compresses or ice packs, Fans by the bag, by your bed, 
fans. See, I can't talk today. Fans by your bed. And um, other things that um, could help you is keep up, ladies, keep a fan handheld fan or a small portable fan in your purse. Now, at this time, I wasn't even thinking about putting on makeup when I was going through that because I tried that once. And that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Me, I was going out, had my makeup on, got dressed, and all of a sudden, it hit me. Makeup came off. I looked down. It was on my clothing. Makeup <laughs> had dripped all on my clothing. And I said, hmm, forget this. I went, turned on a cool shower and went and stepped into the shower and just let the cool water hit against my body from head to toe. I didn't care. And I called my friend and told her, I'm not going. And she said, what? You sweating up a storm? I said, I sure am. And she started laughing. And she said, okay, I'll talk to you later. But yes, get checked out if you are experiencing any of these signs. And also ask your doctor about supplements that can help treat this condition. Because there were a many day that I would have to run down into the kitchen and open up the freezer door and just stand there with my head in the freezer until my whole body cooled down. Now, when we return, guess who had to have a COVID test? That's right, me. When we return, I'll tell you all about it, and we'll hear the latest in healthcare news. So stick with me. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. All right, here's the latest in healthcare news information brought to you from MetPage today. Now, is there a double mutant virus variant with features of the so-called California variant plus a mutation found in Brazil and South African variants? Well, this has been detected in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Eek variant that partially evades vaccine protection turned up in about 70% of one Tokyo hospital cases. Also, as of Monday at 8 a.m., the unofficial toll stands at 30 million. 706,277 cases, 555,001 death, up by roughly 450,000 and 5,600 respectively from a week ago. Now the Johnson & Johnson vaccine trial will expand to include adolescents as young as 12, vaccinations for pregnancy or while breastfeeding may be safe and effective and may protect the baby 
somewhat. A Chinese city on the border aims to vaccinate all 300,000 inhabitants over five days. Who's watching over what retail pharmacies do with their patient data bonanza from the Pandemic Shot Administration? India pandemic situation is worsening. Remember those millions of vaccine doses weren't at a Baltimore plant? The government does, and it's cutting AstraZeneca out of the manufacturing there. Now, good news? Guess for who? Four monkeys, at least. A single shot of a nasal vaccine protected monkeys from SARS infection. Now, the CDC gave updated cruise industry guidelines on the pandemic precautions, but won't yet say when ships can sail from U.S. ports. Could this become the standard vaccine passport? More countries sign on to a digital travel pass developed by the International Air Transport Association. Now, were those medical supply contracts negotiated by the former President, Trade Advisor, Peter Navarro, all fair and square. In other news, rapper DMX is hospitalized in a vegetative state following allegedly an overdose, a heart attack, both according to different media accounts. You know, I love some DMX. My prayers are with DMX and his family. X, hold on. God has you. FDA turns down Acadia Pharmaceuticals request to expand indications for what is this? Um, Nepalzide to include hallucinants and delusions associated with dementia. There are a few common ways to earn patient satisfaction, but so many ways to go wrong. Measles is back in the Democratic Republic of Congo, just eight months after the last terrible outbreak ended. After a divorce, who gets custody over the embryos. That has been your latest in healthcare news. When we return, I'll tell you about why I had to be tested for the virus. So stick with me. All right, we're back, and I'm going to tell you why I had to take a COVID test. Um, On Tuesday, I picked my sister Dolores up from work, and um, she got in the car, and she said, I have something to tell you, and I said, what? She said, I've came into contact with an employee that they work with that um, has COVID. And so I looked, I said, I said, say what? She said, yes. And she seen by the look on my face that I was mad. I said, I need to know 
when was this person tested? And she told me, she said, well, her mother showed the signs. The young lady's mother, the young lady lives at home with her mother, showed the signs of COVID and they went to get tested. Um, And the daughter did the rapid results, which um, I told her that doesn't mean anything to me because the rapid result can give you a false positive and a false negative. I said, somebody need to tell that young lady um, she needs to go back for another test. And she said, well, she she's in isolation. Her mother's in 14-day isolation. So I said, they got COVID running all throughout that home. And I said, and the young lady didn't have the common sense not to come to work. So she put everybody else in jeopardy. Not only thinking everybody else at work put their families in jeopardy. So it is a trickle down effect that I do not appreciate it. So I went um, Wednesday and um, I did not go for the rapid test. I took that swab. I stuck it as far as it can go. And I rotated that swab for 15 seconds and my right nostril then took it out, did the same thing. And my left nostril broke it off, placed it into the... um, the test tube, seal the test tube back up and put it in the container. So I will know um, by the time, maybe I'll know today, Friday, or maybe I'll know Saturday or Sunday, but I'm not going to claim anything. I got up this morning I took my temperature. It was at 99.1. I always carry a low-grade temperature due to the lupus. Uh, My temperature yesterday um, was at 99.1. My temperature on Wednesday was at 97.1. And before I went to bed, it was at 98.6. So it was going up. So, but I'm not claiming anything. And I know that um, my results will come back negative. So that is why I had to um, be tested. Also, This is for anyone who's listening, who is working outside of the home. Social distancing when it comes to your co-workers, because true, some may have be asymptomatic and may not know it. But if you have a family member who you know is exhibiting signs and symptoms of this virus. Keep your behind at home and don't be a spreader of it and putting more people in danger. Yes, I'm saying in danger of contracting this virus. So um, that's why I um had to be tested but before i go i want to leave you with this every day may not be a good day but there is something good in every day did you catch that every day may not be a good day But there is something good in every day. I hope you caught that and put it in your pocket. I want you 
to have a most peaceful, safe, and blessed weekend. Be the reason someone smiles today. I'm Susan Hendricks for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I'll catch you guys next week for another episode. Stay safe.